Hello, and welcome to Culture Shock. My name is Colin Parker, and today I am joined by none other than the Scavengers Network friend, yeah, Pat. How are you doing today, Pat? Hey, good. Yourself? I'm doing pretty darn good. I'm very excited about <laughs> this. Um, this like You are literally the first person that we talked about when we uh, talked about making this show. We were nice. Like, oh, we, gotta get, we gotta get Pat on. <laughs> um, so, uh, just like... Uh, the interview with Mocha Jake, we talked about, um, you know, meeting him through whatever we call it. That's where Alex and I also met you. Right. Um, you know, we started talking about the show, you know, on Twitter and stuff like that, but like eventually that like expanded beyond that. Um, and when it was time to start this channel, we were like, we need icons. Like it's boring just to have our names up there, <laughs> you know? Um, and, uh, so we turned to you, um, and I really love these very, very much. Um, Thank you. like I make, I make sure to use those icons as often as I can. Um, so today I just have uh, just a few questions for you. Um, and I'm going to start off with, I think, kind of the most traditional question, um, which is how did you get started? Just like just about every other artist's story. It's like I just was always drew as a kid and I just sort of never stopped. It's like it's just one of those things that came naturally to me and people told me I was good at it. So I just awesome. kind of kept doing it. And did you take, like, classes for it at any point, whether it was, like, an art class in, like, elementary school or beyond that, or are you 100% self-taught? I would say I'm, like, mostly self-taught. I did take, you know, there were classes in, like, elementary school before, like, arts classes started getting the boot, but, uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah. middle school, I don't think I took any art classes in high school, but, hmm. you know, I don't feel like I learned too much about it. It was mostly just like, oh, yeah, paint this. But, like, not actually teaching you any fundamentals right. about design or anything. I did mm -hmm. go to college for two semesters to study fine art, just to give myself, like, the basics. And then I dropped out just because it wasn't for me. So, like, gotcha. I, I did learn some things there, but most of the stuff I learned is all self-taught and, like, looking up tutorials on the internet and stuff. Gotcha. Where'd you go to, um, where did you go for those two semesters? I went to a TCC. They have an art program. Oh, cool. That's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a city away. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I've been like on, I don't think I've actually been on the campus, but I've definitely passed by it a few times. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what is, uh, what would you say is like your favorite thing to draw? Whether that's like drawing things like, you know, the icon, like people, you know, or if it's like a character, like the, um, like when you guys did like the Monster Factory characters or, <laughs> um, it's definitely, like, character-driven. It's, like, I still need a lot of practice with, like, backgrounds and environments and stuff, but, like, I have I always default to drawing, like, characters and specifically, like, faces, like, like exaggerated expressions and stuff. I just love that kind of stuff. It sort of harkens back to, like, I used to watch a lot of Nickelodeon and stuff back in the day. Right. So, like, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd see, like, goofy faces on, like, Rock was Modern Life or something. I'd be like, that's funny. I want to draw stuff <laughs> that that's funny. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, man, I... Those were like the glory days, I feel like, of, of cartoons. <laughs> Not that there isn't good stuff still out there, but like, I don't know, maybe that just is me being like an older man now. I'm like, oh, you kids, get off my cartoon lawn. Um, but uh, when you sit down to draw, right, you know, what is your process? Like, how do you kind of like map out your session? Oh, boy. Um, it's the same process every time. I always start with like a sketch. How I get to that is always different it's like sometimes i just have an idea in my head of like i know i'm gonna draw like this kind of pose or i'm gonna draw this kind of character or whatever mm -hmm. how i get there is like always a, a chore because <laughs> sometimes i'll need to look up reference for like a pose that i can't get right or sometimes i'll look up a color palette i want to incorporate or other oh. like visual cues like that yeah like i a lot a lot of my art i like try to challenge myself with something and be like i want to do something with a patterned background or i want to try something with a dynamic pose so like that's kind of where i start i just have an image in my head that i just need to put into practice and like do something with and then that's pretty cool pretty um, basic so stuff from that, there i had like a sub question you mostly answered actually even within that one but really? so you're just to kind of i guess clarify a little bit so like when you sit down um you generally have kind of like a rough idea of like what you're like kind of ready to go do or is is it ever like you sit down and you just go well let's see what happens today you know like let's see what comes up naturally oh here. boy no i i can't do that when i stare at a blank canvas i just it's too much pressure i rarely I ever you. just open up a window and be like i'm gonna draw today and i don't know what i'm gonna draw but something's gonna happen it's like i need to go in with a plan <laughs> 
I totally hear you on that. I that's why I like make notes and stuff like that. Like for interviews and everything like that, I can't just I can't wing it. I'm not yeah not great at like winging questions. Um, so uh, you do a show called the Doodle Cast with mm-hmm. another you know WWCI Twitter buddy Jetpack mm-hmm. Bragan. Hell yeah. Um, so how was this show conceived? Um, uh, Jetpack Bragan, Sean. I never call him Jetpack Bragan. That feels yeah. weird. Uh, me and Sean met over Twitter. And I introduced him to the show, and, like, we would, it's like, we were part of this, the, uh, whatever we call it, community. Mm -hmm. And me and him just got to talking, and we became really good friends, and we just, I can't remember how it happened. We just decided one day to be like, what if we did, like, some kind of podcast or something about art or whatever? And I guess the podcast idea really didn't go anywhere, but then we were like, what if we just did, like, an art stream? Is there any way we can do an art stream where both of our screens are shown at the same time? And we used Google Hangouts for it, and we've used different stuff since then. Mm-hmm. But it was just more of like an excuse to sort of hang out and draw together and just chill. So that brings up kind of two cool things for me. So the first <laughs> one uh, was something that wasn't something I was already going to ask. I did not know this. I thought that you guys were friends before this. So you guys met through No, no, no. We, we were friends. We were oh, friends oh. before that. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I I must have. I think I just misunderstood what you were saying. Then that's my bad. I was like, "Whoa, what?" <laughs> yeah, um, we we met a couple of years before. Okay. Um, but like it was through like that like community was like how this show you're saying was like kind of thought up of almost. Uh. Or I guess just like talking not, more often from that is that. It is just we sort of we. I, w- I started listening to whatever we call it, and then I sh- I like showed it to him, be like, dude, you gotta listen to this, and that's when he like started drawing fan art with it. So it sort of just became a thing, where, like I'm drawing some fan art of the show, and he's drawing some fan art of the show. Gotcha. Okay. So now, that we now, we just both kind of got into the community. Right now, I'm on the same page. Okay, I, <laughs> I I'm following you now. All right. Um, so you were talking about using like Google Hangouts and some other things. So considering you guys are in different places, yeah. And yet streaming onto one screen, how how do you guys actually do that? Because that part always, like, amazes <laughs> it, me that you oh make God. that work. It amazes us that we still do this show. It's such such a clusterfuck. Can I curse on this thing? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We I curse fig- all the time here. I figured I could. I just like when people in interviews cuss and then ask if they can cuss afterwards. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lord, so we started with Google Hangouts because it was the simplest thing because... Google Hangouts could be integrated into YouTube before YouTube had their own streaming thing. So you just recorded the whole thing and it just automatically plopped it into your YouTube channel. So we just created a YouTube channel and just recorded our Hangouts. But it be, it just became too complicated because Google Hangouts is really bad. <laughs> yeah. So we started using... Sean found this thing called appear.n appear.me i can't remember what it is it's some weird mm-hmm. website that basically does exactly what google hangouts does it so you can screen share and like get a bunch of different webcams of different people as long as they have like the room code they can all pop right. in so we started using that it's still kind of bad but and it's very iffy whenever we try to add a third person which is mm-hmm. when it gets complicated when we try to add a guest but it works better right. than Google Hangouts, so it's kind of what we. That's how you we've... get the split screen, right? Yeah. So Sean, okay. Sean is now the one who streams it. I used to stream it when we did it back on Google Hangouts because I understood it better. I haven't mm-hmm. used it in a year, so I don't know how it works anymore. But Sean took over the streaming duties, so he like created a layout for us with both of our screens, and then he captures his screen directly just off of his monitor, and then he captures my screen separately by capturing his internet screen is okay where my webcam is gotcha and okay. then he, he just puts it both into the thing and then he captures the chat and everything it's a very it's a mess <laughs> right and that sounds just like a lot of like uh map like almost like mapping basically kind of crazy yeah. um okay so uh the next question that i have is like kind of switching gears just a little bit um uh you have a character that you've created <laughs> named race rabbit and like a subsequent property running around him um and so you know you were talking about how much you like to do like characters and stuff like that so you know what was um i guess the the first question would be like what was like the inspiration that like led to this uh this character um it kind of goes back to like watching nickelodeon stuff like i've like ever since i was a little kid i wanted to like have my own show 
Mm-hmm. And I, I originally wanted to do animation, but animation just wasn't for me, and so I sort of fell into comics. So I just really wanted to do, like, a character-driven, like... I'm, I imagine it as if it's, like, an episode every week. Of course, for a comic, it's going to be, like, issues every... However right. often I do it. So, like, I just want to do, like, a fun cast of characters going on different adventures and telling funny jokes. That's cool. Ah, uh, that's that's awesome. Um, And so then what is his, uh, like story like what's kind of like his background i guess that like i i guess almost like his origin like, story of just like how how, he, like how he gets into that like let's go out and adventure oh lord i have no idea i'm still figuring that shit out <laughs> there you go I, i'm what? just Sorry. creating the characters now and the idea with this comic is i'm trying to challenge myself to actually tell a story because the mm-hmm. only comics i ever made were like gag a day slice of life like you know three panels one two three punchline type of stuff and that's fine i liked it but i really wanted to experiment with drawing longer form stories so i'm i chose a really dumb idea but like what if cartoon animals were in space (laughs) so i'm just (laughs) gonna start with something simple to just be like let's see if i can learn how to tell a story so pat um before we continue on too much further i just real quick wanted to ask you um so, uh, you know, what are we drawing today? You know, what are we what are we looking at as we're listening to this interview? Um, and, you know, what was the general like inspiration, I guess, you know, for for this drawing that you're creating for us today? Um, yeah, the inspiration for this picture was I saw this picture of Princess Peach or Princess Toadstool, as she was called back then, um, from this old Super Mario Bros cartoon. It was called like Super Super Mar- the Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3, which is a dumb name. And there's just this, this picture, I guess, from one of the episodes where she's wearing this big sweater and the ripped jeans and everything. I was just like, oh my god, that is such a look. I need to draw that. So I took it with my own interpretation and just added the 80s background because it was just like, this is an aesthetic. I need to draw this. So going back to what I was talking about earlier is like, I go into a drawing with like, an idea of like oh i want to draw like this 80s pattern since she's got like this look going on about her so i just had to get that out of my system so when you um sit down to draw and stuff like that what is the um uh because i know that you do like primarily like 99 percent of, of your work on like digital Oh, yeah. Right. So what is your, you know, program of choice and what is like the tech that you use to do all this? Oh, gotcha. Um, Okay. So for years, like you said, I do most of my stuff digital and I used like um, a Wacom Intuos tablet. That's just a little tablet you sit on your desk and you kind of use it like a mouse pad where you draw with a pen and just look up at your screen. Mm -hmm. And I eventually got a Cintiq, which is those big pen displays. So it's basically like a monitor. You can see exactly what you're drawing and draw the pen directly on it. I love it. That's awesome. I recently picked up a Microsoft Surface Pro 4, mostly because I wanted to try to experiment with something that could be more portable, Mm -hmm. and also because the Cintiq gets really, really hot (laughs) the the longer you use it, and Mm -hmm. that's I think, was a real catalyst for it, because this summer has just been so hot, and I realized I... I just didn't have the motivation to draw as much as I used to because I just imagine, oh, God, I'm going to have to sit in front of that Cintiq for like an hour or two if I want to get something drawn. And it's just didn't appeal to me. So I was like, I'm not drawing as much as I used to. And I could just go to pen and paper, but yeah, (laughs) so I got the surface and that's kind of what I've been drawing most of my stuff on lately because it's just a bit more convenient for me. Awesome. I think that... um... I could be wrong, but I think that uh, Jake also had just said something about getting a Surface Pro, which is interesting. So I guess that's really? like, that must be kind of like the next thing, I guess, since it's like more portable, like you said, that yeah. I mean, that would make sense. Um, and so, um, oh shoot, hang on. I had a follow-up question. <laughs> um, hang on, sorry. Um, and, uh, Jerry, Jerry, edit this out. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so, uh, okay, sorry. No. So when you use these um, like tablets and stuff like that, is is there like a program that they use specifically mm. or do, are these things that connect into something else like Photoshop or, you know, other right, right. softwares? Um, so with both the Cintiq and the Surface, I it, they both run Windows because the Cintiq connects to my computer and all that. And mm. 
my program of choice has always been Clip Studio Paint, formerly known as Manga Studio. It's the, the best program I've ever used. I used Photoshop in like my early days of digital art, and it was fine, but it was so much working around. Because it's it's a photo editor. People have just right. found roundabout ways to make it make drawings, but it's <laughs> right. fine. People can do some awesome stuff with it. I just was not satisfied with it. When I found Manga Studio, I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. This is actually made for making comics and illustrations. It's like, it puts so much thought into, like, what an illustrator would want. And, like, every single tool can be customized to do exactly what you want. It's the level of, like, personalization you can add to it is just amazing. So that's been the only thing I've used for, like, years. Awesome, awesome. Um, I'm a big, like, fan of hearing what people's, like, tech and tech preferences are like i i really enjoyed that kind of stuff probably because i like doing this sort of thing like the whole editing and you know sitting down to make things work um hell yeah so uh, i'll like go on youtube binges and just like watch people's reviews of different like tech whether it's like different mm -hmm. tablets people use or the different programs even if it's something i don't think i'll ever use i like hearing people's opinions about stuff like i agree with that i i did that like just uh, just the other week like I sat down and like you know I, I'm recently been getting more into film stuff but like I know I'm not gonna own like a broadcast level stuff like personally <laughs> yeah. um, and I was still like watching tech videos about broadcast level cameras and I was like I don't understand half of what they're saying but this is interesting <laughs> it's fascinating um, you get lost in it <laughs> yeah I, I totally agree um and so uh my I just have a couple last like kind of uh uh, cleaning house, I guess, questions. Um, <laughs> so if someone uh, sees your work and is like, boy, howdy, I'd love to be an amazing artist like Pat, uh, what advice would you give to them? Um, don't compare yourself to other artists. The best advice I like see going around is like, don't compare yourself to another person. Just compare yourself to the artist you were yesterday. It's like, as long as you are making improvements in your own stuff, don't worry about what other people are doing. It's okay to be inspired by other people, but if you keep comparing yourself, be like, oh, their their stuff is so much better, or my stuff's never going to live up, you're just going to make yourself miserable. Damn, that was actually, like... <laughs> pretty, like, I have actually never heard anyone necessarily, like, say that. I mean, I guess I kind of have, but, like, when you said that just now, I was like, man, I definitely do that all the time. <laughs> like, huh. I follow a lot of artists on Twitter, so, like, I'm seeing, yeah. like, advice pop up, like, every day to, like, encourage young or like beginner artist right also listen um, to bob ross because he believes in you <laughs> <laughs> yes oh i love bob ross i someday i would like to do like actually like go through an episode of that and like actually do like try oh follow along with him yeah yeah i just feel like that'd be lovely um, oil paint's so, so expensive though oh i know <laughs> he's just so soothing too like, i know and we're just gonna make a happy little you know Bush over here, and uh, you know that. We're gonna draw a little mountain over here. You know what? Let's, exactly. Yeah, let's make another little mountain because everyone needs a friend. It's like, oh, yeah, Bob. Uh, like Bob. <laughs> oh, my heart. Um, so if somebody wants to contact you for commission work, uh, where <laughs> would be the best place to reach you? Eh, find me on Twitter. Yeah, Pat. <laughs> I have awesome. social media other places, but Twitter's like the place you'll most likely find me. Awesome, yeah. Twitter Twitter is a pretty great tool, honestly. That's how I found a lot of people I'd like to talk to, and um, that's how we found you. So, yep. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us this week, Pat. Um, as always, it's a pleasure to work with you. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Awesome. Um, so, like he said earlier, uh, if you want to find him, you can find him at twitter.com slash yeah, Pat. <laughs> um, all right. Well, uh, that's going to do it for us this week here on Culture Shock. Um, we here at the Scavenger Network, we'll see you here back. Nope. Let me try it one more time. <laughs> Uh, we here at the Scavengers Network will see you all back here next week for another episode of Culture Shock. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.